Hi, my name is Dr. Junaid Siddiqui, and I am a movement disorder neurologist here at the University of Missouri Columbia. Uh, every year we do this Parkinson's disease patient and caregiver conference. This year we're going to do a webinar series, and I'm here to talk to you about complementary and alternative medical treatments in Parkinson's disease. So when you go to a doctor um, for your Parkinsonism, uh, after they tell you, uh, you you have Parkinson's disease, uh, then they uh, give you some options. They, after telling you what the, the, the condition leads to and how, how it evolves, um, they, they, they tend to tell, give you options about medications and uh, procedures. So uh, some options would be uh, like wait and watch. You know, your symptoms are not that bad. Perhaps we can follow you up in six months or nine months and see if you have more symptoms. We can consider giving you some medications. Or they may put you on some medications that may be prescribed with some potential side effects. They may offer you some invasive procedures like deep brain stimulation surgery or a duopa pump that may be offered then and then or perhaps later down the line with, with potentials of complications. And they may, they may also advise you to exercise. What you don't usually hear in the news or from doctors is, you know, is there any non-prescription supplements uh, that have any proven efficacy or benefit? Should we be on something? Should we be doing something else other than taking medications and just exercise? And, and what is the evidence uh, for these uh, supplements? So um, I, I had this, uh, this question and this quest, and I tried to figure this out, and I actually worked with um, some of my colleagues from around the world, and we were able to gather information about um, complementary and alternative medications. And what is the evidence um, is there some human data available, evidence that we can, you know, confidently advise you to use something or, or there isn't? So, so in general, um, there, there is a growing attention towards herbs, foods, and spices in Parkinson's disease management. And uh, unfortunately, there is a limited scientific data because of lack of randomized controlled trials. Um, and that uh, results in lack of confidence for a physician to give recommendations. In 1998, uh, the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine was established to conduct research on CAM, which I'm going to call CAM. Um, this, this goes to show you that things have been um, being taken more seriously in terms of CAM and its research. This was later renamed as National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health Sciences. So what are what is alternative medicine um, in, in Parkinson's disease and, and other conditions as well? So it's a heterogeneous group of theories and practices that have been uh, scientifically, that have not been scientifically tested, and they're not commonly taught in the mainstream medical system. Uh, some surveys show that up to 85% of Parkinson's disease patients have used some form of CAM during their, their course of illness. So what are the varieties of CAM and what's their evidence. So, so um, there are, there's, you know, diet and vitamin supplements, herbs, Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine, nutraceuticals, homeopathy, and spices. And we'll go over them one, one after the other. So uh, to start off with diet and vitamin supplements, you know, there are, you know, vitamins like folate and vitamin E, uh, sulforaphane, uh, propyl oligopeptidase, or POP they're called, Vitamin Ds, carotenoids, uh, Mediterranean diets, uh, intermittent fasting, and ketogenic diet are some of the things I'm going to talk about. So let's start with folate. We know that uh, lack of vitamin B12 and folate that uh, sometimes develops in Parkinson's disease patients because of lack of absorption can actually cause neuropathy but may actually accelerate the Parkinson's disease uh, condition. However, there, were, there, is, there has been research and when they, they provided supplements to these, um, these vitamins, that did not lower the risk of Parkinson's disease. However, this is a uh, low risk uh, supplement, no side effects, so it would be perhaps advisable to start taking folate supplements, for example. Sulforaphane, uh, is, uh, it has antioxidant effect and it is shown to protect from neurotoxicity in mice. Uh, glucorophanin is a precursor of sulforaphane 
and is found in vegetables like broccoli sprouts. So one can imagine that if you, you, know, you add this to your diet, that can perhaps help. Uh, however, there is no human trials on this. Um, so propyl oligopeptidase or POP uh, inhibitors, they reduce Parkinson's disease pathology in mice models again. Uh, this is present in fish like salmon, cod and trout as well as some cheeses. So vitamin D supplements, you know, high dose vitamin D does improve balance and walking in Parkinson's disease. So, you know, worth, worth taking. Uh, carotenoids uh, are vitamin A precursors. Uh, they are usually present in red colored fruit and tomatoes and they prevent Parkinson's disease in rats. However, there is no human trials, unfortunately. Mediterranean diet. We know that it is, uh, that is associated with longevity in elderly uh, people and it essentially consists of a lot of olive oil, legumes, unrefined cereals, fruit and vegetables, less meat and dairy. And th there is some evidence that this may reduce the likelihood of a person developing Parkinson's disease in the first place. Intermittent fasting, we know the high caloric intake predisposes to neuroinflammation and, and neurodegeneration. And uh, we know that fasting has been practiced for centuries in various religions and various area, you know, regions around the world. And it has shown to reduce inflammation. So it, it has also shown to improve memory and increases resistance of, um, uh, to damage uh, in the brain. However, there is no consensus on the pattern of fasting. Um, some people fast uh, and they don't drink water or, or eat anything from you know, sunrise to sunset. Uh, some people just drink water without eating anything and some people simply avoid certain you know, uh, food, food products. Ketogenic diet is, uh, has been around for centuries and it has, all, you know, it has been used for drug resistant epilepsy. There is some evidence that it actually improves motor performance in Parkinson's disease patients. However, the diet is not very palatable and it reduces appetite, which is concerning for Parkinson's disease patients who are already um, uh, developing something called sarcopenia or loss of muscle mass because of lack of use and lack of nutrition. And if somebody has reduced appetite, so you can imagine that can further worsen that. Uh, so there's some, some research on it and they're saying that if you don't do ketogenic diet, if you just adjust it, so that you replace it with medium chain triglycerides that may actually, without even changing the carbohydrate content of the food, that may be more palatable. Vitamin E, uh, some, uh, there, are, there are some evidence that vitamin E may improve memory. However, high dose vitamin E in a large trial called Datatop study that did not prevent Parkinson's disease or did not slow it down and it did not prevent freezing. So if you're using vitamin E for some other reason, that is fine. But if you're using it for Parkinson's disease prevention or slowing it down, you know, I'm not sure if there's enough evidence for that. So let's talk about herbs, Ayurvedic and Chinese medicines. You know, there are soybeans, uh, uh, nigella sativa, uh, which is called the black seeds, and then Chinese traditional medicines and Ayurvedic medicine from India. Soybeans, um, and you know, some people uh, use soya milk and, uh, and, uh, and, and oil. So soybeans may increase the levodopa degradation and have beneficial effect on motor complications of therapy. So, uh, and this is you know, on, on humans. So Ayurvedic medications include mucina purines, which is a legume, visia faba, uh, uh, and some other uh, uh, you know, compounds, banisteriopsis, Copy. Um, I'm not going to name all of those, but uh, but but they, they they have shown that they uh, increase um, levodopa activity, like part, you know cinema uh, duration, and have been used on humans for centuries in India. Nigella sativa. This is uh, black cumin or um, fennel flower seed, uh, or also called black caraway seeds. Um, uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad. Uh, he, he was fa famously quoted as saying, it's a remedy for all diseases except death. It is also um, mentioned in the Holy Bible as a curative black cumin. Um, uh, the main ingredient is thymoquinone. Unfortunately, there are no human studies for this, but animals and in vitro studies indicate that it reduces inflammation, 
and damage to dopaminergic neurons and may be protective against Alzheimer's disease and even traumatic brain injury. Ayurvedic medications uh, like, uh, you know, some of the things I, I mentioned earlier, uh, they all have, uh, you know, they, Im they increase the duration of levodopa activity and, uh, and they, they have been used uh, for centuries in India, like I said before. Uh, traditional Chinese medicines, these are usually compounds of different chemicals and they have been shown to have beneficial effect in increasing the duration of the effect of levodopa uh, or cinnamate. Uh, or increasing the effect of cinnamon, and uh, there, there are a few in there, uh, uh, you know, um, there are some tongue twisters, uh, but so I just noted them down over there. And then nutraceuticals, uh, they, these are, um, there is evidence that dietary products, you know, uh, have health and preventive therapeutic potential, and that's where the nutraceuticals uh, term came out. So things that in, in the food products that can be used uh, for health benefits. And um, so something like coenzyme Q10, glutathione, uh, carnosine, cytocholine, creatine, um, phytoestrogens, polyphenols, green tea, omega fatty acids. So we'll talk about all of those things. So carnosine uh, is present in meats, um, white more than red. It has antioxidant and wound healing effect and anti-aging properties. And in rat models of Parkinson's disease, 14 days of carnosine actually normalized the brain antioxidant activity. So there are no human trials, but if you can, uh, you know, use this carnosine and, and the, these things on, on an everyday basis, uh, you, you can, you know, perhaps uh, reap the benefits of this uh, compound, even though there are no documented human trials on this. Citicoline is a, another food supplement and uh, and, and regular use for two years uh, led to progressive improvement in Parkinsonism in humans. So this may be used as a levodopa sparing agent. Um, so if you use it with levodopa, you may actually have, um, you may be able to reduce the dose of cinnamon. The dose is usually about 500 milligrams per day. Glutathione, this is a, another major natural antioxidant in our brains. It lower, uh, we know that the, the, uh, the levels of glutathione in the brain is lower in the substantia nigra of patients with Parkinson's disease. And uh, it has shown to protect against cell loss in Parkinson's disease in rat models. So, so it, it may be beneficial to use it. Coenzyme Q10 is uh, also a, a, a abundant in high energy tissues like the brain and kidneys and the heart. It, unfortunately, it was not superior to placebo in clinical trials of Parkinson's disease. So that means if you're using a, you know, a placebo, which is essentially you know, sugar water or, you know, with no medical benefit, and if you compare the coenzyme Q10 with that, it, it turned out that it had no beneficial effect. So, um, however, it does cost significantly. And uh, some people end up spending up to three hundred dollars a month on this. So if you're if you're using it, you know I'm, I'm not sure if it's worth the price because we don't have uh, data to back up the efficacy. Creatine is another supplement, and it was shown to be neuroprotective in mice. Um, it, there is some conflicting evidence in uh, that if if it helps in Parkinson's disease, there are some trials that show there is in improvement in mood and, and reduced requirement for Parkinson's disease medications. And while in other trials, it shows there is no difference between placebo. So, you know, um, so it's up in the air, we don't know. Phytoestrogens, uh, these are estrogens, they play a role in response to brain inflammation. Um, phytoestrogens are plant derived, they're non-nutritional dietary compounds, they're usually found in soya. So uh, they reduce cell death and degeneration in Parkinson's disease mouse models. So, you know, using soya again, uh, plus point. Polyphenols, uh, plant-derived compounds with high antioxidant properties again. Uh, they are uh, like flavonoids in berries. Um, and uh, apparently it is more abundant in the leaves of berries rather than berries themselves. But uh, it's also found in spices and dried herbs, cocoa products, uh, some seeds like flaxseed and nuts like chestnut and hazelnut, 
and vegetables including olive and globe artichoke heads. Uh, we know that it reduces inflammatory response to stress in brain. Unfortunately, there is no human studies. Okay, so although we we document uh, the you know the improvement in in animal models and in vitro studies, but there there are no human studies. So you can imagine that nobody can suggest this with a, a great deal of confidence. But it would make sense to use it, I guess. Green tea is the uh, so tea is the most consumed beverage in the world. And, uh, you know, all the varieties of tea, green tea, black tea, whatever, they, they have the same um, plant, um, you know, base. It's uh, Camellia sinensis. Uh, green tea is, has been the most extens extensively studied uh, for health benefits. We know that it reduces the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. It ap appears that the more you drink, the better it is. Uh, it does improve memory in mild cognitive impairment in a double-blind study. So three cups a day for three months, uh, there was a study that showed reduction in oxidative stress in Parkinson's disease. So, so green tea, um, so th that doesn't mean the other teas do not have the same benefit, but since green tea has been studied and we have data uh, about three cups a day, perhaps you know, improves the uh, oxidative stress and improves uh, memory in mild cognitive, so worth considering. Omega fatty acids, these are polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFA. Uh, they reduce inflammatory markers, improve motor performance in Parkinson's disease patients, and is shown to be neuroprotective in animal models. Dietary sources of PUFA include vegetables oil, oils like canola, soybean again, corn and sunflower, uh, chia and flax seeds, green leafy vegetables, fish, fish oil, beef, and lamb. So, so fish, you know, uh, um, and... Uh, uh, soybean and and these things so so you know in Mediterranean diet these are uh, you know recommended so th that's where they they overlap I guess spices you know curcumin is the most widely investigated spice in Parkinson's disease we know that it has neuroprotective effect it may slow down Parkinson's disease in uh, it, it has it does slow down Parkinson's disease in in vitro studies but unfortunately there's no human um, trials on this homeopathy was developed by Samuel Hahnemann uh, and the theory is that uh, potentized um, agents, if they, if they are able to produce symptoms in healthy individuals, that same product can be used in patients to neutralize their symptoms. So there are some claims that it may help Parkinson's disease. Unfortunately, there's no data, there's no uh, human trials. Still beans are a family of polyphenols first identified in grapes. Um, and uh, there, there are some trials that, in, that indicate that, is, that there is activity against Parkinson's disease in vitro. Unfortunately, again, there is no human trials on this, just like some of the other things that we mentioned before. So if I, if I am able to give some recommendations based on the information that I just you know, presented, uh, there are, um, of course, there are medications that have a lot of um, scientific data, they, they are backed by um, um, bl uh, double-blinded uh, studies. Um, and then so there is, there, is, there is proven efficacy in humans and safety data available so that physicians can usually recommend that with, with a lot more confidence because they know that it works in human beings with some, uh, of, co of course, the cost and side effects of medications. Uh, but uh, the complementary and alternative medications um, that have been available for centuries, uh, they have never seen you know, the limelight, unfortunately, because they, there, is, there hasn't been uh, significant studies on it, the human, or if there have been studies, they're on animals, and then there's no, no proven human data. So that makes it um, less, um, uh, less likely that physicians will be recommending it or mentioning that you know, artwork. So, so uh, a lot of people end up using uh, CAMs, uh, but then uh, we went ahead and researched a little bit about it, and uh, so I've just presented that. So of course, you know, exercise and uh, you know, especially aerobic exercise is extremely important. But taking using a balanced diet, you know, lots of fruit and vegetables. Uh, th there's no doubt about it from from the uh, from the data that I've just provided uh, that it it, it improves uh, it improves um, symptoms, it uh, improves metabolism. It, it, it has antioxidant effects. It provides you these, with these various chemicals and, and vitamins. That is extremely necessary. So um, try to use fruit 
uh, on an empty stomach in the morning before your main meal fruit is usually um, it, it is actually uh, digested in our small intestines so and most of our meals are are, are protein based and protein is digested in the stomach so that's what I, I you know I recommend to all my patients when I see them is if you eat fruit after your main meal it is going to be sitting for three hours on top of your main meal fermenting without you being able to use the health benefits of fruit so it, it may be a good idea to eat fruit on an empty stomach like in the morning before your breakfast and give it a, you know 30 minutes 15 minutes and then go ahead and take your your main course uh, that may be more beneficial to reap the rewards and, and the and the benefit of fruit and Mediterranean diet, you know, uh, olive oil, um, you know, uh, fish, uh, you know, white meat, um, and uh, you know, and, and less dairy, perhaps. Black seed, uh, chia seed, uh, consider those, um, um, and then and consider fasting if you can. Um, it, you know, you may be surprised uh, by the benefits of these things. So uh, at the end, I would like to, uh, you know, um, talk about some of the people who helped me collect all this information and it was a truly global uh, you know, activity. People from Saudi Arabia, uh, Jawad Bajwa, uh, from Houston, uh, Raja Mehana, uh, from India, New Delhi, uh, Rupa, Rajan, uh, Shiva Mittal from Abu Dhabi and myself here in, uh, in Colombia. So once again, thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Dr. Junaid Siddiqui. I'm a movement disorder neurologist uh, here at the University of Missouri Healthcare. Um, and uh, best of luck and uh, stay safe.